Welcome to DeFine, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. Every episode, we sit down with a team who are building to solve important issues of our modern societies. This week, we speak to a partner and way from decentralized options protocol, Open Finance, about a few of their upcoming products and how they're making options one of the pillars of DeFi. Cool. So yeah, I'd I just love to hear about how you guys journeyed into down the rabbit hole into crypto and eventually how you started Open. Cool. Hey, I'm Apana. I'm co-founder of CTO at Open. I got into crypto in 2015, mostly just reading like Reddit forums and following Bitcoin. And then once you're down the rabbit hole, it's hard to get back out into the normie world. From there, I started this organization called Blockchain and Berkeley, which is where I met my co-founders, Zubin and Alexis. Um, we were working on a bunch of different stuff in crypto. So we were working on like proof of stake and scalability and crypto economic mechanism design before I dropped out to take the Teal Fellowship, which is kind of how we started building in DeFi. Um, we were probably the first platform to build on top of Compound. We were building a margin trading product. And one of the most interesting learnings from that for us was that there's still a lot of risk in crypto and there's not a lot of sophisticated tooling to hedge that risk. And that's really what got us excited about building options. To back up, my name is Wade. I lead marketing community at Open. Used to work in traditional finance and consulting and then sort of went down the crypto rabbit hole and finally made the jump at the end of last year to join Open. Options are such powerful instruments because with options, you can kind of mimic any sort of financial payout. And so that's kind of how we started building Open V1. Mm. Now we've launched Open V2, partially collateralized options, which is like an upgrade to Open V2. And we're currently building out Squeep, which is a new Power Perpetuals derivative product. Amazing. You know, why... Were you interested in building a, a decentralized product as opposed to something more along the lines of a like a centralized exchange offering? I think there's like a few different ways that we think about it. One is if you think of like a lot of the markets that exist on the blockchain, if you tried to build something like this in traditional finance, one, it's probably going to take someone 10 years to even get regulatory approval to start a new market on a new asset class versus mm -hmm. on DeFi. It's so simple. Like wh when you think of Uniswap, for example, anyone can launch their own market and start exchanging those assets. And that's kind of what we wanted to bring into this new financial system for options with open, which is one click and maybe like $20 gas fee and you can create a whole new market and you can start playing in that market. The other big part of it is the traditional financial system isn't accessible to everyone in all parts of the world. It's almost like you have a lottery ticket and you're right. born somewhere and you have like maybe in America, you have access to a good financial system. It's kind of crazy to me that my parents in India still send me their like life savings to hold in my American bank account. Wow. And I'm like, why would you do that? And How do they transfer it to you out of interest? I think they had like a bunch of bank accounts in other countries mm -hmm. and they like would save and send their money to other countries. And then when I moved here, they were like, oh, you're in the United States here. Take the money. Right. Is that um, purely because they want USD exposure? Yeah. Partly is USD exposure. The other part of it is like you have kind of you have more insurance fdic insurance is like much higher compared to like insurance mm -hmm. in any other part of the world and so they almost it's like they want that right and when i think of that like something as simple as like a savings account isn't that accessible to most people in the world something as simple as like a stable currency isn't accessible to most people in the world mm -hmm. and a big part of why we're building in DeFi is to make these financial tools accessible to anyone in the world. And it's not about having this lottery ticket that you were born in a country and you were born into a robust financial system. Options, I mean, options are obviously like a more complex financial product. So like, how do you imagine options fulfilling on that mission of democratizing finance? 
I think there's a lot of like interesting ways options can be used. One is like getting more risk exposure and like getting more leverage, which is obviously like what some people in DeFi want. Mm -hmm. But there's also the flip side to it, which is just as there are people who want the additional risk, those people can take away the risk from people who are averse to having additional risk. And so options are a great instrument to help you hedge, like put options, for example, can act as insurance. And they they are used as insurance or like ways to hedge risk in traditional finance. But that is a tool that's only offered to like a select group of traders. But if you can allow anyone access to that, anyone can hedge out their positions. They don't necessarily need a FDIC insured account, they can have put options in addition to their like crypto. Do you imagine that options will eventually be used by say people like your your parents in India or yeah, I mean, do you think they'll be powering a kind of new type of financial application? Because I mean, right now you might argue that retail users are not really that involved in them. I think in the long term, that is the goal. I think that's probably going to take 10 years, maybe right. longer. It's just like today, if you say I have a phone, it is implied that it is a smartphone in most parts of the world versus like 20 years ago, if was there maybe not even 20, maybe like 15 years ago, mm -hmm. if you had a phone, it implied you had a flip phone or like right. Nokia. <laughs> but now it's just like, oh, obviously I have a smartphone. Like, why would I have anything? But and like, if you don't have a smartphone, you express that you don't. And so... I think there will be a generation of people who are born into DeFi as their like preliminary financial system. When I think of like the Gen Z today, they may not have as easy of an access into like the existing banking system, but they could into DeFi. Like they could buy NFTs, they could buy crypto and hold and make a bunch of trades. And that could be their first exposure into having investments and money and like if you think of those people when they grow old, what are they going to use? Not mm -hmm. not your FDIC insured bank account. I mean, they might also use that, but yeah. You know, I think the interesting thing is a lot of young people coming into DeFi. DeFi is basically their first experience of kind of learning how markets operate. Options in DeFi are pretty nascent, right? Like they're not yeah. widely utilized. Why do you think that is? And what do you think that the pathway is to their adoption? And like, what are the implications? I think part of it is the markets, like the people who are using DeFi aren't there yet, like aren't that aware of how to use such financially sophisticated tools yet. I think in traditional finance, the markets are more mature. And so you have more sophisticated users using those. I think part of it would, would be solved by just time as like more people enter crypto, as more people using crypto start to use more sophisticated tooling, it will gain more adoption. Other parts of it are liquidity. Well, to be fair, when I think of like Robinhood, there are some markets which aren't that liquid. Liquidity does play does play a big role, I would say. I think AMMs for options, something like that could be really big. I think finding other ways to make options easy to retail users is going to be really important. I also think scaling Maybe not right now the biggest issue, but it is one of the core issues that needs to be addressed in the next like couple of years to make it easier for like smaller retail users to participate in the markets. I think it's it's interesting to to kind of imagine the pathway or the trajectory if options are something that users will your average kind of retail user will actually want to interact with or if it's something that's just like abstracted away and will be in essentially in a in a yield farm, right? Yeah, it's it's hard to say which way it's going to go. Thanks, Stakedow, and like building the cool strategies that you guys have been putting out is going to be really impactful in getting more retail involved in trading more sophisticated strategies. So We've been super excited to build out that first strategy with you guys and, you know, looking forward to building some more. And, and so like, what are some of the products that you mentioned earlier that you guys are, are working on right now? Okay, yeah. Wade, do you want to take this one? Yeah. Having learned from Open's experience over the last year and a half, it's like options are perceived to be very complex financial instruments. And like, I think if you 
you know, took half a day on a weekend to actually read about options on Investopedia, you'd find that they're not that intimidating and they actually help protect you or help you make money in any market environment. But having said that, like, I still think we're at a point where DeFi users are intimidated by them and rather deposit funds in a vault like you can on StakeDAO right now. And that's sort of the the user behavior that we took into brainstorming what the next version of Open's product would be. And essentially, Dave White at Paradigm wrote a research paper on everlasting options. And at like a very high level, it's mimicking options payouts, but eliminating what users typically like find cumbersome when trading options, which are strikes and expiries. Um, and in DeFi, that would be helpful as well because like you avoid gas and you avoid having to be right on both like the direction and the timing of an option. And so the research team had a summit a few months ago where they were trying to dig into this everlasting options research paper and figuring out what the applications would be in DeFi. And they came up with a concept called Power Perpetuals, which is effectively using perpetuals or like a power, like ETH squared as a payout function and building a product around that. So I guess like in short, squeeze is the term for ETH squared and it's a perpetual right derivative that eliminates strikes and expiries and give users exposure to basically just pure gamma, which is what people usually look for when they're trading options anyway. It's and like, like if you like money, you get money squared on the way up and on the way down, it's no liquidation. So leverage without liquidation. So if like you take E squared, if five X is from here, you make 25 X on that position. I mean, we're still working out some of the, the open questions right now, but it's a pretty big research breakthrough and we're looking forward to like getting it to market and figuring out how it can be useful for DeFi users. I wouldn't say it's like, okay, we're, we're just trying to mimic volatility with this. We're more so trying to give people leveraged exposure to an index, which in this case is ETH squared. And then we also don't want there to be the ability for, for liquidations. There's some really cool things that you can do with power perpetuals that allow for that, but it's, it's, it's not just like exposure to volatility. Before you, you, you mentioned gamma, I mean, can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. So gamma is the second derivative of the underlying. It basically explains the change in the underlying asset with respect to delta, which mm -hmm. delta is the change in the price of the option with respect to the underlying asset. And so it's basically giving you exposure to that second derivative of the underlying asset price, which is what you're effectively trading with ETH squared, which in this case is the index. For, for the end user, what are the kind of advantages of that? So if you are, like if you're bullish on ETH and you think mm -hmm. over the next two to six months that there's going to be a pretty large bull run and you want leveraged exposure to that without the ability to have your position liquidated, you would buy squeeze each day, squeeze sort of like rebalances and you pay a little bit of funding for that position. So if you're right on your bet and three months from now ETH has tripled, then you get, what is that, nine times you get instead of like just making three extra money, you now make nine extra money. It's a vehicle that helps give you, yeah, leveraged exposure to the price of ETH in a way that you don't have to worry about being liquidated. Amazing. If if ETH is just static, you're just kind of paying that small premium. That's the downside, basically. Yeah. yeah. When you're long squeak, you're when you buy squeak, you're basically taking the view of your long volatility and you think ETH is going to go up. And when you're short squeak, you're holding the opposite view, which is short volatility, ETH is going down. Right, right. It, it totally makes sense. What are some other applications of Open's protocol right now that you can think of for, for DeFi users? So we've been explain, uh, exploring a bunch of different directions. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Wade, you want to chat about like equity options and like 
Yeah, absolutely. So we've been like, we had a, a work summit where most of the open team was in real life, a house in Washington, and we broke up into different teams and sort of it was the squeak team and the integrations team. And the integrations team was was trying to think of different use cases for options within DeFi. A few months ago when we launched Open V2, it was like, how do we make open as easy as possible for other teams to to integrate with and and one of the the ideas that came out of those brainstorms was what if you could use options like physically settled options in the form of like DAOs and emulate equity stock options given to employees of startups that have a vesting schedule that basically incentivize alignment and the long-term health of, of startups, but let's make that DeFi native. Um, because I think a lot of times DAOs have problems keeping the community engaged, making sure everybody's voting, and by introducing options as like a mechanism uh, for rewards that have a specific vesting schedule or have certain requirements in order for community members to be eligible. I thought that was a pretty interesting use case for using options within DeFi. And then another use case would be for for liquidity mining. I think protocols typically have problems with people joining these pools. And then as soon as they get the rewards, they dump them, which has a negative downward effect on the price of that asset. And you're not really attracting users that are incentivized to help with the long-term success of the protocol. So using options and liquidity mining programs could help create a like stickier interaction between users providing liquidity and the protocols that are trying to incentivize the right users to stick around and do more than just provide working capital. But there's a few other ideas we came up with too that I'll let Aparna speak about. Yeah, some of the other exciting directions, I mean, some of them Stake has already built out. So Stake has <laughs> ahead of the game. Well, you can earn yield with options in a couple of different ways. One is by selling options, which is the current product that's live on Stake now. The other way, of course, if you're selling options, there's always the risk that you could lose your principal. But if you are more risk averse, you're really worried about like losing your principal. You can create other interesting structured products like principally protected notes, where instead of selling options, you can buy options. And you could do you could buy options using the interest that you earn from Compound or like Aave or any of these other lending protocols. And when you buy options, it's usually like the slow bleed where you're losing the premium over time. Right. But in some some off chance, it could be like you win the jackpot, and when when you win, you win big. And so when you're buying these options using the interest that you earned from your Compound or Aave you can earn even more interest net over a year, um, mm-hmm. depending on how the markets are doing and if you want the jackpot. Who's building out some of these things? Because obviously you guys are kind of on the protocol level. So it'd be, it'd be super cool to hear about like some of the different teams that are building on you guys, apart from us, of course. It's DeFi. Everyone's collaborating with everyone. So we'll <laughs> see how things go. A lot of the live big projects so far are Ribbon Finance, Staked Out. Both are building structured products. Opeat, which is basically taking a put option and ETH and wrapping it together so that you have ETH where the losses are capped, but you keep the upside. And that is almost like an interesting collateral asset, which can then be used by like other systems like Maker or Compound to ensure users don't get liquidated. Because now that you have ETH and the put option, there's like this, this your loss is capped. Other interesting stuff that's been built on Open is like Ziku. And they're like a really cool, easy to use retail interface uh, for the open open platform. Awesome, just straight like straight options. It's like a, a quiz that you answer a few questions, and by the time you're done going through it, it, it shows you the options that make sense with like basically your outlook on on the market. Oh, amazing, Ziku! I have to check that out. Yeah, we kind of been having a bunch of ongoing conversations, and what we've figured out is like most most situations call for personalized sort of code being built for them so it's not necessarily one size fits all so you're, you're obviously building primarily on ethereum but are you exploring developing on other chains like l2s 
that's something we've been thinking about. I think right now we're just focused on being big on layer one. I think mm -hmm. I think gas definitely is an issue long term. I think short term, it's more important to like have something that users want at like. I don't think scalability is the biggest problem right now. I think right now there are other issues and we're focused on addressing those before we get to scalability. Right. And what do you, I mean, what are those main issues that you see? Making options understandable, easy to use and liquidity. Those are sort of the main issues that we're focused on right now. So reducing liquidity fragmentation across like expiry strikes. And that's in a way like been why we're moving towards squeak, squared eat. The so I think that's that's kind of been our, one of our main focuses, and the other is integrations and like working with other teams to help them use options in a way because you can create a lot of interesting financial payouts with options. So like understanding how options could fit into their ecosystem, I think those are our two main focuses. Do you see institutional investors using decentralized options anytime soon? Maybe in like a couple of years, I think. There's still a lot that needs to be built for them. But I think institutional investors will come in once retail is there. And I think mm -hmm. everyone wants to trade against retail. So like get retail. <laughs> Who doesn't yeah. want to trade against retail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I guess one kind of ultimate question I have for you guys is then uh, where does the name Open come from? It's actually Opion. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So open comes from, so when we started the company, like one thing we all cared about is like having an open financial system, mm -hmm. like O-P-E-N and O-P-E-N as a startup is like not something you can really have as your name and it's just too right. common of a word. And so we're like, all right, we're O-P-Y-N. That's mm -hmm. what we are. Great. And so that's where the name came from. That's that's cool. I love the Greek branding you guys have. It's super cool. Open used to have a pretty like minimalistic brand. And I think I'm always going to love that old open green that we used. But it became pretty clear that there was like confusion around what the logo used to be. And there was also a lot of confusion on how to even pronounce open. There are people who pronounce it opine. There were people that just said O-P-Y-N. There were people who thought the logo used to be a tree or an umbrella, and it was actually a, a green mushroom. And so when we were brainstorming about different ideas for the rebrand, the Greeks are such an inherent part of pricing options. And we really leaned into that. And we tried to pair the like old ancient Greek bus that like you can see like Athena on across the website. And then we added a little bit of like crypto futurism flair with some of the neon colors that you see. But it was kind of like, what's a cool aspect of options that really only options possess and like Greeks kept entering the conversation and ancient Greek was dope. So we, we decided to make it part of the branding. Yeah, it's, it's super cool. I think it's really in line with DeFi and making options kind of like sexier. I guess like one one question, if I can ask like on y'all's end, like how has, I've been jumping in and out of the StakeDAO Discord, but how are sort of community responding to the covered call vault that, that you guys launched and had a pretty successful launch within like, what was it, two days or one day it reached its initial caps? We've, thanks to you guys, taken away the complexity of trading options. That's really what our user base is interested in, is just kind of having the highest APYs on battle-tested infrastructure. And it's 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 going great. You know, we just increased the vault capacity uh, days ago. So I think, you know, as the strategy just sticks around longer and longer, you know, people have more and more confidence in the fact that you can continue to deliver uh, a decent yield. So I think, it's, I think it's going great. And, you know, I think it's these types of initiatives that we work on together that deliver on what you guys were talking about earlier, basically selling the idea of options to DeFi users. Yeah, no, it's super cool. I think as more people enter DeFi, you're going to start to see like a progressive reduction in some of the APYs you get and mm -hmm, traditional mm -hmm. pools. And so you'll need to create these, these products that are actually trading strategies behind the scenes, but have been automated for users that do get you these, you know, 20 plus percent APYs. Mm -hmm. And like, especially with the StakeDAO launch, we're like, just just under a week since launch and there's already almost like a million dollars worth of ETH and deposits, which has been yeah. super cool to see. We're yeah. super, super excited about it. 
yeah, it's awesome to be working with you guys. Yeah, no, we're we're looking forward to to continuing to build out this like ecosystem, and I know we're we're jamming on some ideas now. So for those listening, we got some cool cool stuff coming up for y'all. But yeah, you guys have been super fun to work with. Awesome what you're doing in DeFi, and and hope we can continue doing some of the stuff for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks a lot for for coming on today, guys. Appreciate you taking the time to kind of talk everyone through your product at a pretty high level. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate your time once again. Bye. Bye. See y'all.